I have a very distinctively clicky keyboard. Thank you very much. Uh, it is... One second, let me just take off one of my keys. I think it's... Uh... Oh, no. What have we done? Oh, God. Number one, the keys won't come off. And number two, I've opened some sort of help... Mm. Are you trying to rip off the keys on your keyboard? Oh. Then, no, it doesn't show me what they are. It just shows that I'm bad at get... Oh, I'm bad at life. Huh. I know what I haven't done. I haven't set up my camera properly. Or my face. No, my fa God didn't set up my face properly. I suppose I could blame my mother. Right. Lower the volume slightly on the music that's going to be coming. Let's do, do it like that. Uh, let's, let's make my camera happen. Hi. Uh, don't don't worry about this. This is me going to be clicking on remove the gain in the background. Let's remove the anti flicker. Let's turn off the low light compensation. And let's turn off the auto zoom. Perfect. Really good, yeah? There's a weird light over here going on. I'm blind. That weird light should be gone now. Although I can't see because I stared directly into a lamp. Guys, don't just stare directly into an eclipse or a lamp. Or the sun. Or the Medusa effect of a nuclear reactor. Um, don't do any of that. None of that's good. Right, so um, let's... Uh, oh, it's got a big black screen. Let's, uh, let's click on this one. There you are. Got a cheeky little Chris Roberts behind me hiding. Let's, let's move Chris a little bit more so he's a little bit more sneaky. Sneaky Chris Roberts. We're so sneaky. He's <laughs> so sneaky. Um, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. No, I don't have to worry about hairstyles. Well, I do. I have to worry about hairstyles a lot more than other people do. Um, because I'm bald. I'm not sure if you're aware. That's, uh, that's not my hairstyle behind me. That is the hair of Chris Roberts. I can put on top of my head. I am... Um, I try to move around. Um, is there an up-to-date design document on data running as a gameplay loop from Cloud Imperium? No. There is very few. Um, in fact, I would say probably no um, what people would consider up-to-date design documents on any gameplay loop. Um, and, and actively, they um, they started to do the, the deeper dives and some of the, the gameplay loops and design docs. Uh, and they went, we iterate so heavily on these that they evolve so much that having a design document doesn't really do what the plans are for mechanics justice. Um, so uh, expect them to occasionally give deeper dives at what they plan to do with the gameplay um, and um, that to be less of a design document than we previously had on some of the other mechanics. It's, for example, um, sort of refining and mining, or mining more specifically, that's also added, getting refinery gameplay added to it. That's sort of been evolving for a... a, a 18 months or so now so uh, that's the sort of route they want to go if you'd like to ask a question during the live stream just question in brackets um i can i'll, I'll be able to see it i might be some minutes behind in chat uh, as i always am because i am bad um what ships have you picked up during this intergalactic aerospace expo um so all i'm going to be picking up this intergalactic aerospace expo is mercury star runners for giveaways and at least one persis that's the current plan um, if something else becomes a parrot, or a, a parrot, um, I will, I don't know what's going on in my brain, uh, I will, um, also get that, maybe, um, so, yeah, I, th I think Mercury Star Runners for giveaways, I, I might pick up up to five of them, I'm thinking, um, maybe I should get a year's worth, but I think they're a really good ship to give away each month, because they're not too cost costly for the channel, but they are highly sort of like um people really want them 
Um, and it's just expensive enough to also people to go, I really want that ship. I know. Let's go follow Board Gamer and share all his videos because we love him. Um, well, we are going to do uh, in a bit uh, is we are going to take a look at the expo hall. Um, because at 4 o'clock it's going to change over to the Origin Day. I have a bit of a talk about what's available on Origin Day as well. Um, so I think today the only thing that's going to be limited hull sale will be the Origin 890 Jump. I'm not 100% sure how many hulls they're going to sell of that, but they will be selling them in three, three waves. One at 4pm UTC today, one at uh, midnight UTC, uh, and one at 8am um, uh, UTC tomorrow, effectively. Um, not just one ship at a time, uh, but uh, it, it, a wave at those times. Um, yes, the Mercury Star on it is pretty, pretty exciting and pretty cool. Uh, is all the empty space inside ships 3D meshes just hydrogen fuel storage? It depends on what space you're talking about in any given ship. Uh, yes, so um, I do want to look at... Uh, this little naughty boy. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about this again. Um, we're going to be talking about this naughty little boy um, until it's actually released. So this is uh, this is the Perseus. Um, we expect it to be on sale tomorrow. Uh, potentially, it could be on sale uh, today for a concierge, maybe in the evening. Uh, I will uh, get a video up on that uh, if that is the case. As soon as we know more about the Perseus. But uh, what do we know about it? Not much at the moment. It appears to be um, a large corvette-ish size ship. Um, it's rumoured to be a, a bit bigger than the Hammerhead, but smaller than the Polaris. It's hard to get a scale of the size of the ship um, here. Um, but obviously it is ploughing through a Hammerhead. Uh, and the idea of this, um, from what we can see here, is that it's got... Um, a big gun on the front. I mean, I, I believe it's also got a, another large gun and more central on its underside as well. Um, and then it's got two smaller turrets for, for defense. Has it got other weapons? Potentially. Some people have suggested that maybe it's got mines. Uh, they were like, oh, maybe it's a, a, it also li lays mines or it's got bombs or, or something. I mean, m maybe. Um, I mean, maybe it's called the Perseus because it also has the, the head of Medusa, and maybe it's got like an interdiction. Maybe it's an interdiction ship with large cannons. We don't know. Um, but from what we can tell, um, and what uh, the name suggests, Perseus the Monster Slayer, uh, and what was uh, been rumoured for it, that it was uh, potentially um, originally uh, sort of like supposed to be a big Ares, um, that it's going to have big conventional guns um, rather than torpedoes or missiles or uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of little turrets or anything like that, so... Um, really, really, really... Um, is it meant to be ramming the Hammerhead? I don't think so. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe it is supposed to be ramming the Hammerhead. Uh, but I, I think it's destroyed it and then it's just going through the wreckage. Um, because if it was ramming the Hammerhead, I'd expect to see some, you know, damage or burn marks or scorch marks or bits of the Hammerhead still just sort of around it. Uh, but this sort of like it's been destroyed and then it's gone through it. Um... Now, some people have said, oh, maybe maybe it's quite small, maybe it's a bit smaller than um, was expected, because it's expected and rumoured to be between Hammerhead and, and sort of um, Polaris size, but maybe it's a bit smaller, um, and if, if it is, cool. Um, if it's larger, cool. I mean, I, I'm all up for it, whatever. It's also rumoured to be around $600 um, war bond. Um, for starting, which is pretty pretty cheap for a capital ship from Cloud Imperium. And that's effectively what it is. We we don't know the size of its components. We don't know technically if it's a capital ship, but it's basically this gunboat Corvette, right? Um, hello, hello. How many ships are in the Star Citizen universe? Um, it depends by what metrics um, you measure that. Are you talking about ships? with all variant hulls are you talking about including variant lo uh, loadouts um are you talking about just um unique ships um are unique ships is the um hornet one or is it the hornet the hornet ghost the super hornet is that all of them so there's a billion metrics to, to to record that by how many left to be built out 
is different from how many are there in the Star Citizen universe, because a load of them are ready, but they're not in game yet. Uh, there's there's a lot going on with that question. Um, I will do, however, a Star Citizen ships breakdown video. That is a very good idea for the end of this year. Um, so within the next few weeks, uh, and I'll get Zin, maybe potentially even researching some of it. Um, uh, ships of Star Citizen. How many? How many left? When? Cool. Uh, I will get something for you for that. Um, as an actual video. Uh, beam weapons are going to be a thing. There's literally a Idris beam weapon kit. Um, and they wanted proper beam weapons. So, I know it's off topic, but any news regarding the Drake Corsair? No new news on the Drake Corsair. Uh, we saw the hollow model of it at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo on Drake Day, but that's that's literally it. Uh, plus, uh, they're constantly adding new ones. It's period. Yeah, so they've they've added the the Talon uh, and the Shrike, um, which is the missile boat variant uh, of that or missile fighter variant of that. I'm coming in 3.12. Really looking forward to those ships because they're cool and Tavarani. <coughs> Sorry, that was my me clapping my hands. It's the hush Ah! I'm stretching! <sighs> oh. But I hope everyone is doing well um, during lockdown. Um, the UK is in its second phase of lockdown at the moment. So, that's not... What, second lockdown? Another lockdown. Um, which is not great. Um, I'm in tier two. Uh, which means I can't socialise and play D and D around my mate's house, uh, which is pretty crappy. Um, especially seeing our figures are pretty low in Southampton, which is where I live. Um, but uh, it's a little annoying. But, uh, I'd rather have a quiet Christmas uh, and a slightly more social now, uh, personally. But that's just that's just me. I can only talk about what I want in regards to that. Yeah, it's just a bit of a, a, a lame thing. I'm looking forward to uh, the world opening up a bit more again uh, so that I can go to a um, studio tour That's for, for, for uh, Star Citizen. That's what I want to do. I want uh, CitizenCon to happen. Uh, I want um, Bar Citizens to happen again. I want to be able to do BritizenCon uh, and the big Bar Citizen uh, slash pub quiz that I've got planned that I want to run. Um, I want... I had to go to board games conventions, because um, I'm going to start doing some board game stuff. Um, who's your current D&D &D character? Uh, it's, his name is uh, Marden Naz, uh, and he is a uh, rogue, um, human variant rogue, who's crossbow, crossbow boy, run around with hand crossbows, go pew pew pew! Um, very, 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 very survivalist, but sort of like, keep, tries to keep people alive. And anti stay he doesn't really want to go around uh, doing the murders. Um, he's not a murder hobo character. Uh, did you notice the barrels near the hammerhead wreckage in the picture? Uh, yes, I did. I can see the, the barrels down here and here. What, do you think they're mines or something? I know someone was talking about it being a mine layer. Um. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I'm really, really looking forward to the Perseus. Perseus? Perseus? That's Perseus. Um, I'm really fucking looking forward to the Percy. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's looking really cool. Um, but we don't know if it's got more going on with it. Like, that, there are there are interesting things on the side, aren't there? Like, there are these things. You don't know what they are. There's winglets everywhere. Is it is it is it communicating? And it's got bits like the Nautilus had, like like this bit, like the Nautilus had, eh? The thing in the like the ah. Oh, could could it be? Could it have some sort of hmm? Is she Corvette class? We don't 100% know, but it looks to be like a Corvette gunship. 
um, for the most most part, um, sort of uh, hammerhead to Parara size, um, around six hundred dollars is what it's rumored to be. A big, big gun, big gun on top and bottom. That's what it looks like as well. Um, yeah, it's hard to tell here what is important and what is not. Um, hmm. Uh, I bought about a merchantman for 330 USD. If I upgrade it to a C2 that costs $460, the banner merchantman is now $450. Can I then scrap the C2 and get $460 to buy the body merchantman with 10 year insurance? No. When you melt a ship, yeah, you get the value of the money you've put in. So every dollar that you have spent, you get back in store credit. I say every dollar. Um, you won't get taxes back because you've already paid the tax. The store credit, if you ever apply store credit, then removes the tax in addition to the store credit you've applied. Um, so, you've bought a Banning Merchantman for 330 USD. Okay. Um, you can upgrade your Banu Merchantman to the C2. Yeah, for the, the difference in the value. So you bought the Banu Merchantman for 330 quid. It's now, or 330 dollars or whatever. Um, it's now worth 450. Yeah, it's it's worth 450. So you can upgrade it to something else and just pay the difference for, between the 450 and whatever else ship. You, if you then melt the ship in the future, you will only get the money that you put into it back in store credit, not the full value of it at the time. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Can someone give me and my buddy a mole? No. Well, you probably get one in game. Either work for it towards it in game, or uh, or buy one in game eventually. I am a distinctive keyboard myself. Uh, me and Zin were playing a firefighting simulation earlier, um, which was an okay game. It was a bit funny. Um, pretty simple. But uh, not unenjoyable. How much is the Orion? Uh, so, uh, let's have a look at how much it was uh, in the sale. Uh, oh, the Orion hasn't gone on sale yet, has it? Uh, so, let's have a look to see how much it is currently on the, uh, the CCU upgrade system. We can get a, a feel for how much the ship is. Um, ship upgrades. Your desktop. Uh, Orion. Four ships. Um, so five hundred and seventy-five dollars. Um, is its latest most recent value will that change any further when it goes on sale on the rsi date well i suspect that will actually be um it's value. that gabe newell behind you it's chris roberts but it was where's he gone he's gone he just he goes sometimes he's just chilling out so the orion was uh, and potentially still is 575 dollars uh, and you'll be able to get that on the rsi day which i believe is tomorrow It shouldn't be a limited hull because the limited hull ships uh, are today, the 890 jump, and then the last set of l limited hull ships is tomorrow with the RSI Polaris and the Constellation Phoenix. Uh, and we are expecting the uh, RSI Perseus um, to be out tomorrow as well. And it's not to be a limited hull for it to be a new concept ship. Uh, I wish the ship upgrade would give you the GB... Uh, Great British Pounds value. Does it not if you switch your country? Bear with me. Boop. Let's change to that and then upgrade. It does not. Oh. 
I didn't know that it didn't. I haven't even thought about it. I've become too um, Americanized with my poons and my dullas. I've got the smoothest of starts. Oh, so I've got a. Uh, I'm jiggling. I'm jiggling my leg. So. Sem semi nervous twitch. I traded my freelancer for a Hercules A2 because I wanted a sizable ship with some decent firepower. However, I'm afraid it might be a bit too much of a ship for me. What would you suggest? Um. I mean, it's one hell of a ship. Thank you very much, Dino, for the chuff. It's like you've set fired a chaff. Chuff. Poof. 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 Thank you very much. Very much appreciated, sir. I do like money. Let it be known that I like donations and money. Um, you think the A2 is too much of a ship for you? Um, so you will be able to get NPC crew in the future. You will be able to get AI modules in the future that will help you semi-automate some of the functions of the ship. Um, and you can always work with other people. Or you can get a different ship. It might be too much ship for one person to use, admittedly. But you don't have to use it just yourself. I have a very big question, not about the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, but about the game. When will commercial flights come? So, um, this is probably going to come around the same time they put the um, Genesis Starliner in. I forgot the name of it briefly. Um, so they've got ports at um, at the landing zones at the moment. So if you go to like, you'll notice at Law Field, you'll notice at um, Area 18, you'll notice um, at Microtech, there are literally sections of the starport that don't really go anywhere. Um, and you go, oh, um, but it looks like they're for commercial flights and for um, Genesis Starliners. And it might not just be Genesis Starliners, but basically you'll get onto these, um, go to these ships, and they'll be effectively, for the most part, NPC ships, and they'll take you um, around the bus. They'll, they'll take you from uh, one planet to another, from one planet to another station. And obviously, they're going to want to take you to space stations as well. And that's one of the reasons they're going to need the docking collars, because these ships are going to be pretty big. Or maybe they'll dock with lots of different stations and things like that as well. So it will be coming in the future. Um, I would expect it to not too far out. It's medium term rather than long term for sure. Um, and it's going to be one of the ways that NPCs move around the verse as well. Uh, and it's going to be a viable industry and business for players to do as well. Um, literally, people carrying. How do you think the Perseus is going to stand up to the Hammerhead? I'm a Hammerhead owner, and I'm a bit worried about the release. So, okay, it's not just one ship always beats another. It is going to be loadout based and all that sort of stuff. However, the Perseus is geared towards taking out larger ships with its big guns. Yeah? Um, if the Hammerhead gets very close, uh, maybe the Hammerhead can get in close and um, fly around weak spots and pew 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 lots of damage very quickly with lots of its turrets. Um, but the Perseus can be operated with, it looks like, less people because it's got less, uh, uh, and that means, you, uh, and it's got larger caliber weapons, which are more suitable for taking out um, ships like the Hammerhead. Whereas the Hammerhead is more suited to taking out uh, lots of um, small and medium sized ships very well and um, defending against like torpedoes and missiles, probably, too, or at least, miss, uh, at least torpedoes. Whereas the Perseus will obviously be at a disadvantage potentially to um, fighter bombers and, and the fighter squadrons and things, uh, compared to the Hammerhead anyway. Uh, what time does the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo switch over? In 50 minutes time, 4pm UTC. If the Perseus doesn't shoot harpoons out of the side holes uh, to grapple ships and board them, then I'm... Uh, if not, why not? Um, we don't know if it's got some interesting uh, other ways of, of dealing with ships. Um, you desperately want harpoons, do you? Um, you're a harpoon. Harpoon boy! It does look like it's got some stuff going on with its with the little sidey flaps, doesn't it? How much money have they made so far this Intergalactic Aerospace Expo? Uh, so, um, bear with me one second. Do I have... Uh, we'll give you a rough one because I don't... I don't have the spreadsheet in media. Oh, maybe I do. It's saved. It's got to be saved in my Google Docs. Why wouldn't it be saved in my Google Docs? Uh, didn't have immediately accessible in my notes. Roadmap graphs uh, owned by not me. Crowdfunding development spreadsheet. 
bring this up, assuming this is... Right, so take this with a pinch of salt as I... Although this is a, a pretty good source of information that I use. Um, this has been tracking uh, since, what, 20, 2012? Um, the Star Citizen funding. Um, every day, it literally grabs um, data. So what? We're close to 3,000 days now? Oh shit, son. Alright, so the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo started on the 20th. Uh, so, all right, let's make a copy. Oh, do I have to go all the way? Oh, no. Oh, no, I've got to go all the way back there now. Huh. Swoop. Swoop. Uh, swoop. Right. So, uh, we're going to take all of the money that was made so far. Uh, and we're going to say... Uh, this box here equals the sum of those boxes. Uh, they have they've only made eight point five million so far. Uh, <laughs> hashtag only. Uh, see, it'll be interesting to see how much more they make. Obviously, we are on the twenty seventh now, so we haven't got data for today. Um, and we'll see how much money they make by, what, the 2nd of December? Um, they are basically trying to beat their previous um, sort of amount of money they made from Fleet Week or, or May, which was 15 million. Um, so, good luck to them! Not sure if they need luck at this point. Um, but yeah, that, that'll be relatively close. It'll be interesting to see whether they, they can um, uh, break the, the previous record of May. Uh, so if you look back in May, uh, we can see, uh, where did Fleet Week start? Is it the end of... Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate the love. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Uh, yeah, so we've... Um, I think we can start on the 23rd of May. Looks like it might have. Maybe, maybe, maybe the 21st. Uh, they made a huge amount. 2.2 .2 million in one day. Oh, oh my god. So much money. So much money. Yeah, they made uh, 15.5 million throughout the entirety of May. Um, but I suppose the, the whole of Fleet Week um, went on longer than that, but not counting all of uh but it'll be interesting to compare them i'll compare them um apples to apples as best i can in the future um, yeah an interesting one for sure uh ba -ba -ba. What's your best guess of how many hours of gameplay would be required to earn a Perseus in game when the final game launches? Um, oh, Jade, uh, I could. Okay, I could be convinced, to be honest, because I'm looking to do that sort of thing potentially on my own in the future as well. Um, and getting involved with other people's um, uh, and playing with them um, is uh, I, I love I love uh, sort of like social games and role playing stuff. Um, yeah, I could definitely I could almost certainly be convinced uh, as long as it was um, uh, at a suitable time um, for me or, or worked worked for me time wise. And I would wouldn't ask you to change the time of anything of your stuff. Oh uh, yeah, give me um drop me a drop me a message about it. Um, drop me an email at richardboardgamer.co.uk. I'm happy to take a look and feel free to put the name of your stream in uh, as well. You're more than welcome to. Um, so, thank you so much. I appreciate the uh, the sort of invite there. And bearded miner, 
Keep up the good work, board. Hope you and your family are well. Love the content. As always, looking to, uh, forward to future videos and reviews. Yeah, stay safe. I will do. Thank you very much, sir. Very much appreciated. Oh, thank you, guys. Nice to feel welcome. Um, so, how many hours would it take you to get a Perseus? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's sort of like a, a few months of, of, of playing the game. Isn't it? Like three, of three months of playing the game. Or like two months of grinding sort of thing. You'd be able to get one in a reasonable time period if you really went for it. Is the way I see a lot of this stuff. Um, but there's a mixture of how lucky are you? What risks are you willing to take? Um, how big's your org? Um, what sort of le ships can you already leverage? Um, it's it's going to be very different for different people. If you're starting off entirely solo, just with a starter ship, and you're not in an org, it's going to be very different from someone that's in a, a large org that's trying to leverage these ships. Um, dumb question, but on RSI day, do you think we'll be able to upgrade to the Perseus from an existing ship? Yes, I do. I think you will be able to upgrade to it. I suspect it will be CCUable, uh, almost certainly. It's not expected to be a limited, um, limited stock ship. It will be concept, that's what it looks like. Thank you very much, Blake, by the way, for that donation. I like money, so I like you. Uh, I'm sure someone just said scam. I got sc highlighted the word scam. I always give. <laughs> always have a good have a good read of these. Uh, made eight million dollars, but can't fix their server shit. Come on, mate. Hundred percent scam. It's with two M's. Um. It's in alpha. You can say they're bad at stuff, but not scam. Yeah? You can say they're bad. Like, why? This is not appropriate. This is not acceptable. I would have expected them to be better. They've been given loads of money. Why aren't they doing better? But not. They're. It's shit. Therefore, scam. Um. It's a. It's sort of a. Does not follow a non sequitur. Amazon do away with free uh, with monthly free subs as part of your Prime membership. I was subscribed to you, board, but I can't tell. Uh, no, you should still have free Prime subs. Um, see if you can do emotes on my channel um, if you're doing Prime subby stuff, um, and then see if you can subscribe to me without paying money. Um, if it's a scam, why do they keep spending money on development? I mean, they they could st okay. So technically, okay, let, let's go. Full devil's advocate, from my point of view. Um, technically, they could still uh, be doing a really bad scam. Yeah, they could go, well, we're scam people, but we'll spend all the money. It's sort of like, um, how do we pretend we've gone to the moon? Let's build a rocket that's actually capable of going to the moon. Fucking genius. That's, <laughs> that's basically what they're doing. They're also, recently, Star Citizen have opened... And oh, well, opening a new studio. So, I say Star Citizen, Turbulent opening a new studio specifically for Star Citizen to build out um, star systems and planets. Um, so, over the next three years, they're going to expand to um, th 100 plus people, and that studio in Montreal is now specifically going to be working on, on that sort of content um, that, and other supporting things as well, it, it seems. But it is um, seems to be mostly focused on building out gameplay. Uh, Game world, gameplay area. Um, so there's some. Uh, I, I think that one of the things that Star Citizen is, um, that you can be incredibly critical of, is that Star Citizen is an incredibly slow development. Okay, and uh, a, a pretty expanding scope. Um, I suppose it's, maybe the development isn't that slow, but because they keep on feature creeping and because they keep on. Um, and it is pretty slow because they keep on redefining stuff and uh, iterating on stuff and um, the, 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 there's no one burning a, a, a sort of fire under their ass because they don't have a publisher, they're, they're self-publishing. Um, and they have the money and time afforded to them by, by backers, uh, basically, um, and crowdfunding. So um, it's a very unique development and because of that, very slow. Uh, because of that as well, even if they do get all the gameplay loops together, well... We're needing a huge gameplay area to actually play in that, and they haven't even finished one star system yet. Um, and they've delayed the other star system by, like, a, a year or so, um, the pyro system. So, you go, well, how are they going to be able to build out this gameplay area? Well, they probably actually do need a dedicated studio to build that out. Um, 
And that makes sense. Thanks for the stream videos, I really enjoy them, but stop disliking the Nomad. I, I, I can't, I can't lie. Um, I can. Actually, that, that's, that was a lie itself. I can lie. I love the Nomad. They are. Is that better? Um, I'm not a massive fan of the Nomad, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate on it anymore. How's that? Yeah? I won't hate on your Nomad. Uh, what's the aim in the number of star systems? So, a hundred is the rough goal for star systems. They've got, uh, they've actually got, as far as I was aware last time I checked, um, 120 planned out. Um, sort of in the law and ones they want to put in game. But sort of more um, realistically, it's going to be 100 in the long term. Um, and uh, expect the sort of like initial release of the game probably to have like 30 to 40. Uh, and then them keep on adding more every month sort of thing. Um, that'd be my expectation. Um, they could, uh, if they've got good enough tools and a dedicated studio, like a a dozen teams or so working on different systems and planets. Well, obviously that could be a huge amount more systems. Um, but again, that's just sort of like um, hopes, dreams, and I reckon um, based on uh, on some of the facts. What's going to be best purchasable private fleet? CNC or command javelin interest kraken? Uh, it depends on what you're doing with the size of your your your, your org. Um, a huge amount of stuff. Um, will there be, like, jump gates? Yes. So there are jump points, they're called in this. Um, there are going to be wormhole-ish ones that are, are not stable, that may be on more random that you can find. Uh, but there are specific jump points, similar style to Eve, um, like, the, like the jump gates. Um... What else have we got? I recommend the Durr. So that's the freelancer Durr. That's a good starter ship for players with money to buy it. Does the Nomad, uh, does the Nomad best the Durr at anything at, at, so I'm not misleading folks? Uh, it should be more maneuverable. Uh, it's got um, a tractor beam. Uh, does the Durr have a tractor beam? I don't think it does. Uh, maybe it does. I can't remember. Um... The price, obviously, yeah. Um, yeah, the exposed cargo might be useful. Uh, how cool would it be if those massive turrets on the Perseus are pilot controlled? I don't think they will be pilot controlled. They could be, though. Um, maybe one of the... Because it looks like it's got two large turrets, one on, on the top and one on the bottom. Maybe one of them is pilot controlled. But I would suspect they are probably more likely... Um, gunner controlled as in their manned turrets but maybe they're not maybe they're not maybe that's one of the joys of the ship you can run it with a tiny crew you have these like almost cabinet sized ship that you can run with three people or corvette sized cap on my water no. when you're dieting okay bottles of water everywhere help yeah because you're slightly less hungry when you're full up with water um and anytime you get an urge to drink glug 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 what is good for you uh, how cool would it be uh, no so we just literally just talked about it. any word on the mercury star on a bug yeah so um expected to be fixed asap um so it shouldn't guzzle fuel quite as quickly and its fuel intakes should or and or and or um its fuel intakes should be actually taking more fuel um i believe that's the the, the idea um, and sort of any bugs should be, be solved as well. Uh, refuel. Oh, the quantum and refuel being the, the, the same number. Yeah. And um, someone's saying that as well. There, there, there are certainly some bugs or uh, issues that need to be solved with it. I would expect them to be fixed in, in 3.12. Do you think those guns are bigger than the Ares or smaller or about the same size? I think they're bigger. I think they look like size 9 weapons to me. Uh, do you think they should be plugging events when our group found the game effectively unplayable last Saturday? That's 100% fail from our limited perspective. Um, I think they should make it so that that is a fraction of the player base that has an unplayable experience. Um, I've obviously had a reasonably good experience uh, from playing Star Citizen. Uh, 
um, hence why I'm able to relatively easily make videos. Um, obviously, a lot of other orgs and, and people are having a great experience. Some people are not, though, um, and you want to minimise that. So, pre preferably that it's um, no one um, is having a bad experience. Um, so, uh, do you think they should be plugging events when some people are going to have a bad time? Yeah, they still should be. Should they also be trying to solve those problems so that happens um, the, the, the smallest amount, if not not at all? Uh, yes, they should. Um, if they if they are referring to their game as playable alpha, then it needs to be playable um, to at least an extent. So f fair criticism. Versus price is six seven six seven five question mark. Can it be upgraded? So it's yeah between six hundred war. I think this room is six hundred war bond, six seven five um, store credits, um, and it looks like it can be CCU'd up to. Um, not hundred percent confirmed. It is leaks, um, for the most part. I picked up a lifetime insurance limit, and then I upgraded it to a Banny defender, um, and then to the, and I. And I upgraded my Banu Defender to the Mercury Star Runner. Only cost me $5 to make the upgrade. Cool. When the Merchantman. I'm expecting to see the Merchantman at the end of next year. Because uh, I suspect that they've been working a load on Banu stuff recently. Um, and I suspect that's because they want to get the Banu Merchantman uh, in a good place for next year. Do you think CIG releases fake ship info to gauge interest? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's too much of a conspiracy theory or not. Um, I think they certainly gauge interest in ships and ideas on ships before making them. I think that the Perseus is based on um, a couple of other ship, uh, fan-made ships a while ago. Um, and they've gone, oh, we can't copy that ship. We can take a lot of the sort of like things that people liked from it um put it in game looks like the hercules and the tonk for 3.13 um so the t okay so the uh, nova tank is in gray box so yeah i'd expect the the nova uh, what's well, in white box it's being built out of white box um i'd expect that for probably q2 2021 um and the hercules Starlift of the C2, um, I think, could be 3.12 end of this year or um, Q1 next year, sort of between then. We could see some more ships in, in 3.12. We could see the Constellation Taurus, for example. Uh, how you like RSI hiring another game studio to work on other worlds and systems? Um, so it's not... The way I read it... We've got the actual press release. It's not so much outsourcing as a mutual um, growth and investment. So following a monetary stake investment from Cloud Imperium, so, um, Cloud Imperium own 25% of Turbulent. Uh, Turbulent opens Montreal Studio devoted to Star Citizen's development. So um, if they are specifically if they are effectively working as part of Cloud Imperium and they are opening that studio for Star Citizen content and Star Citizen is supporting that and vice versa, then that isn't really contracting out in the same way. It is they are effectively an, an arm of, of Cloud Imperium, if not an arm of Cloud Imperium um, because of the, 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 the actual stake and, um, minority stake investment. So. I will be treating them pretty much as... Uh, a wing of, of Cloud Imperium. Um, but I'm willing to take um, argument to why that's not correct, um, if, it, if it is indeed not correct in any way. I've seen practical pa particle and plasma weapons in the lore of the game. When do you think we'll get them in game? Uh, so you sort of have plasma weapons on the Vandal ships anyway, um, but you'll see the more appropriate um, updated plasma weapons uh, in the future and, and particle stuff. And um, obviously you've got the the Singe singe Tachyon Cannon uh, for, for the Banu. Uh, do you think they should be uh, focusing on gameplay loops instead of releasing new ships and you can't do much with them? Um, they're not mutually exclusive. 
Um, they are focusing much more on gameplay loops uh, at the moment. Obviously, the core of the game is still um, being worked on heavily, and Squadron 42 gets the lion's share of development, although that's also core systems. So. Ever play Pathfinder 2nd uh, Edition? Nope. Um. Uh. Uh, what if the doors on the sides of the Perseus are missile bays, uh, like the Connie? I'd make more sense for RSI and solve a huge uh, weak spot. I mean, maybe. Some people have said they might be little mine holes. Some people might say they're beam weapons. Some people have said that they could be missiles. Um, obviously, you don't want it to step on the toes of the Polaris, in my opinion, which is the more sort of missile uh, and multi rolled one. So, a uh, torpedo to the multi rolled one. Um, Where's physical components? What happened to those? Um, they're working on them. I expect them around the same time or just after iCash. And iCash is middle of next year is what they have said. Uh, do we know the crew size minimax for the Perseus? No, we do not. Um, almost entirely rumoured for the Perseus at the moment. Can the feds detect an illegal package in the Mercury Star Runners uh, smuggling bait? Yes. Um, but in the future, it will be m more shielded um, than, than other other places. It's supposed to be more secure than anything else, so if someone runs on your ship to try and loot you, they don't have access to that room so easily. Do you feel leaving Crytek was smart? They, The work they put into the engine, with Crisis Remastered, Really made performance smooth and added features like road tracing. Um, I think it's probably, I mean, Cry, I think a lot of the issues with Crytek is they weren't paying their staff for quite a long period of time. And you can't be working for a company that doesn't pay you. You can, but it's volunteering, isn't it? Um, how do you feel about switching out mining heads for weapons? Um, I don't, th I see what you mean. Oh. You're not into mining, but you love the mole's look. <laughs> I mean, it is a mining ship. Do you think the Ares is good? Yes, um, I, I like the Ion. I like the idea of av striking um, mid to long range, sort of pew pew. Uh, we will be jumping into Star Citizen in about 20 minutes time. Uh, and then we'll be looking at the uh, Expo Hall, seeing what's what, seeing what's there for Origin Day. Um, have a quick look on the website. Is the Phoenix worth it? Um, I would say no. It, it's a very expensive luxury ship uh, for the sake of being luxury and expensive. Um, you potentially melt, melt it for Perseus. Okay, I can see that. Um, maybe you could upgrade it to the Perseus. Um, you wouldn't try not to melt it because... If you melt it, then it's store credit, and then you have to apply store credit to the Perseus, if you see what I mean, but you can you can melt it if you want, if that's the way you're going to do it. Um, don't own a package yet, however, I've been playing uh, the last, the past week. I love it so far. I'm thinking about buying the Cutty Pack and then upgrading to a Mercury Star Runner immediately for the thoughts. That is um, a lot going on uh, right there. Um, I love the Mercury Star Runner. Um, I... I don't advise people necessarily chuck loads of money into Star Citizen. Um, you, all you need is a starter pack and then you're able to buy everything in game. So there's no sort of like desperate need to quickly like, I must get this ship or I must get this quickly, I must get it now. If you want to support the game and you want to, to pledge and you want to have that now, cool, and then you do you. But you will be able to get the stuff in game as well. Uh, with that in mind, I love the Mercury Star Runner. Um, I think the Cutlass though as well is a great starting ship. Um, so... Bear that in mind. Um, it's uh, the Mercury Star Runner is cool. Don't own a package yet. However, I've been playing. That's right. Cool. You think we will get a whale pre-sale for the Perseus? Um, potentially tonight. Uh, 
I think it's possible. I think it's possible for, for, for later tonight. Why is the Constellation Phoenix a limited sales? Because it's supposed to be a rare shipping game. I just installed Fallout 76. Can I crown iron? No, no. Um, like, I enjoyed Fallout 76 when it first came out. Me and Zin played it a lot. We went on adventures and we messed around and it was a bit dumb and a bit derpy and we enjoyed it. Okay? Um, and apparently the latest expansion stuff is supposed to be pretty good for it. Um, so I think me and Zin will probably be checking it out at some point again properly and actually playing through Fallout 76 and, and messing around. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good laugh. Um... It was dumb, it was broken, it was buggy. I'm used to that with pretty much every game I play now. Apex and Overwatch are the only games I think I play at the moment which aren't broken as, uh, as F. Do you think the Ares Inferno will be any good once it's out? Yeah. I mean, these ships will be balanced so they fit their role in the future for sure. Um... With what, whatever that means, whether you have to make them more agile, whether you have to give them bigger guns, whether you have to give them more power plants or better systems or whatever, um, they will fit. They will fit the role that they have on paper. There might be some that are just that that are better for certain things than others, for sure. There might be a better meta for certain um, gameplay. Yeah, but um, it will be good. Yes. What are the odds we will see one or both Apollo hulls in the RSI day? Uh, I would expect to see uh, the, the both of them, the triage and the. And the standard one. Does anyone know when they will fix the reclaimers' issues with their main thrusters? Uh, no, in the future. Perseus is a limited ship that is only purchasable in the Chairman's Club office? Question mark. No, no, no. No. So the the Perseus should be available from RSI day, and um, to, so tomorrow from 4 p.m. is when the expectation that it should go on sale uh, as a concept sale, but as sort of part of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Now that I own more than one ship, I'm curious if we'll be able to send out our ships on missions with NPC crews that we are not using in the future. Um, so CIG talked about that a while ago and said they want to minimize the entirely remote sort of, I've got an NPC um, uh, army, and I send them out and doing everything. So they wanted to, to minimize that. Um, so I don't think that's, the, that's going to be um, the way they go with that. Do you think we're going to have Poro system next year? Yes, I think end of next year is the current goal. Um, do you think CIG will nerf mining like they did cargo and delivery missions? I think that eventually there will be a dynamic economy that will have all of these as important parts uh, of the game. All of that. Uh, do you think a 350R will fit inside a C2? Don't know uh, until we actually have it in our hands, though it looked like it probably would um, from what we saw of the um, little video they showed of it. Uh, iCash projected for Q2 2021. Uh, so Q2 slash Q3, it's what I'd say. Does so this mean server meshing for Q2 2021 as well or later? Um, no confirmation on server meshing yet, but I would expect it by the end of next year. Uh, and they want to have Pyro at the same time. Do you think they will bring out the Nova Tank with the C2 or shortly thereafter? Uh, I think Nova Tank um, Q1, Q2 2021 looks likely to me. Um, and the C2 either uh, end of this year or Q1 next year. Do you think we'll see anything new on uh, armor and weapons day? Uh, yeah, I'd expect to see some cool displays and maybe some um, cool armory development or in the hollow suite, maybe. Um, you're also having the, the, the best in show stuff, so you're getting all the new skins. Um, talking of which, and let's actually show these new skins. Um, so uh, this, as far as I'm aware, is the best in show Ship Showdown skins that owners that have a Valkyrie uh, Carrick um, Eclipse or Cutlass Black uh, will get. Um, and if you buy any of those ships during the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo as well, you also get those skins um, as a little extra uh, free. Uh, so that'd be cool. Cool little interesting thing. Uh, board, could you do a series of current in game customizations that work best for ships? Um, shield, cooler, gun, and combat. <laughs> yeah. We can. 
Uh, I might send off Zin to actually uh, grind meta with... Um, I'll, I'll see if Moist Noodle wants to be part of that as well. Because um, I uh, I get on well with him and I like his sort of like... Uh, his meta analysis um, and the way he plays. So, um. so I managed to get an Idris P, you monster. And the aftermarket kit this year. Can you tell me the difference uh, to the M? There seems to be uh, missing turrets and mounts there. So uh, as far as I was aware, it's got... Very similar mounts, if not the same mounts, um, to the M, the P. So you can put uh, the railgun from the M onto the P if you had that railgun. Um, so the K kit, instead of the railgun, gives you a big laser, uh, a big beam cannon, um, and some other turrets um, that you can put on to make it closer to the M, but I suppose a different loadout. Um, but the, the M has the, the railgun on the nose, uh, basically, and I believe better armor uh, as well, and a uh, better set of turrets. Um, but the, the K kit um, is beam weapons, new turrets. Um. So uh, embrace the differences that the K brings to the M. Yeah, a lot of people that got the M are going to want the 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 the, the, the address kit. Um, but uh, you can also mix and match as well in the future, and you'll be able to buy different systems for your interest in the future as well. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. What do you think about the bridge placement on large and capital-sized ships? Um, it's different on different ones. Uh, they're relatively well thought out um, for the sort of gameplay they want. I think it looks cool at the very least. Uh, if you could design a ship, what kind of ship and gameplay loop would you like to build for it? Oh, it's hard. Um, so I want ground vehicles for all the sort of roles. Um, uh, I'll have a, a space station builder. Fuck it, why not? Uh, what else have we got? Do you think Cloud Imperium will nerf? Yeah, we talked about that. Uh, are you in... Are you and Zin a couple? Well, Zin's a couple with her uh, boyfriend and partner, Deathcore DC, who's one of my best friends in the world. Uh, and I'm a single. Um, me and Zin make a functional human gamer together when we play games. That's what you mean? Uh, we are, as I am with all women, platonic friends. <laughs> Um, what stands between us today and the development of additional star systems today? What today? The, the amount of time that's in the day is slightly prohibitive. Um, so, um, yeah, they, they they are working on more star systems now. Um, and they are literally, they've literally got a new studio in Montreal um, that is going to be working on star systems and gameplay area. Um... Do you think that we are going to have some kind of parachute or jetpack? I mean, for dropship. So there are going to be ways of surviving ejection uh, in uh, atmosphere. We've said. Um, do I think there's going to be ways of dropping out of ships, um, doing halo drops and and things like that? Uh, maybe. I'm not entirely sure exactly how they want to do it. Whether it's literally you have to be in the seat and the seat drops, or it's like a little drop pod, or or it is a jetpack with a little bit of fuel in that gets you to the floor safely, or it's um, uh, shock boots or something. I'd expect something like that in the future, though. So I managed to get an Idris P, uh, as we talked about that already. What are you most looking forward to in 3.12? Do you anticipate or hope for any surprise additions not currently on the roadmap? Yes, always. Um, Hercules C2. Uh, Theatres of War, even if it's just more Evocati testing, uh, I suppose. Uh, the uh, hard dock um, for the um, P-52, P-72 with the Constellation, um, the Constellation Taurus. Um, lots of different types of gameplay, the Arlington Gang Mission, Xeno Threat, um, uh, the, the load, loads and loads of stuff that could possibly be in 3.12. How does the beam cannon sound again? Probably... Probably like that. Uh... Hey, Bob, just tuned in. Uh, what's your best guess at the ETA of the Corsair? Uh, end of next year, I haven't heard much about the Corsair. The Drake pipeline is actually pretty refined, but how um, how needed is that ship and how popular is it? Uh, what are some of the ships you have bought and for what purpose? Uh, almost all of the industry and economy ships, uh, because uh, that's a lot of gameplay that I want to cover, uh, and some... Uh, of the sort of larger ships uh, and some fighters based on uh, me liking that fighter like uh, I really like the Sabre. Um, expectation of range release? 
it's small, it's compact. We saw the model in the Interactive Aerospace Expo. I um, expect it's sort of Q3 next year, maybe. Seems reasonable. Is that a blocker to development of star systems? Turbulent, let's say, let's, let's say, let's say Turbulent finishes one in March 2021. What blocks that system from being deployed ASAP? Uh, serve meshing and, well, uh, iCache, full persistence, serve meshing. So server meshing that being the main one sort of. Um, have you seen the amazing fan video featuring the Drake Interplanetary ships that Montoya featured the other day? If not, I highly recommend it. I've seen the Drake Interplanetary trailer that uh, Team Majig did. Um, I retweeted. Cargo decks. Nobody mentioned it since they added them. It's because they have a fuck all gameplay associated with them at the moment. Uh, we're waiting for them to have all that gameplay um, associated with them. So um, times to uh, load and un unload cargo. I'm um, having all the cargo consoles there. Um, having uh, NPCs and uh, having it as a hub for escort and freight missions. Um, being able to rent space uh, at them so you can place your cargo places. I'm um, having all that cargo gameplay. Um, at the moment, it doesn't really have much there um, to, to do other than they go, well, this is a cool area. Talon Yerne, I really like the Talon. I'm more into the Shrike at the moment because I think it's a really cool hit and run um, uh, missile boat. I'm sort of quite excited about it. It looks cool as well. I mean, they both look amazing. Um, now that I own more than one ship, I'm curious, will we be able to send our ships on missions with NPC crews? Uh, so, as I said, uh, CIG is sort of trying to... Um, um, the last they talked about it is they didn't want super remote, you don't have to be there at all, uh, things to happen. So um, I'm not entirely sure exactly how they're going to want to do that. Um, could you have other ships accompanying you? Um, yes, you could. That's what it appears to be. Uh, it's more supposed to be, there's supposed to be crew on ships to make up crew, um, but there's basically humans aboard. Would you buy the Perseus or the A2? Not a massive fan of the A2 personally, because I like the C2 more because I'd want to use the C2 for deploying ground vehicles. Um, uh, the Perseus, I love the Perseus though, from from the look of it so far. Uh, is there a definitive number of cores and threads that Star Citizen uses? Uh, my 5950X that just arrived wants to know. Um, so the latest uh, I heard, which was a while ago, they had their Gen 12 renderer stuff working with 30, um, 30 threads. Um, would it expand more than that? Probably. Will it be scalable based on your processor? Almost certainly. Will there be a hard limit? Yes. Will that hard limit probably be very high? Probably. Sorry, I can't be more specific. But... Perseus price? Question mark. So it appears, or at least it is rumoured, to be $600 um, for war bond. Um, can it be upgraded to? I suspect so. It looks like it's going to be CCUable. Will the Perseus be Warbond only? I don't think it will only be Warbond. No, no. It's expected to be like 675 um, non Warbond. Perseus versus Polaris, who would win? It's going to be based on a load of different things. The uh, torpedoes that Polaris have, uh, has are obviously going to be um, hugely powerful against large ships. Um, uh, as are the Perseus' cannons against the Polaris. My expectation in that fight would be the Polaris would win. Is the Perseus going to be flyable at launch? I expect this to be a concept sale tomorrow from the 28th, is what we're expecting. Uh, and it's possible that that concept sale could start uh, tonight with um with uh, concierge we don't know do you know the status of the rocket pods i've uh, suddenly become assessed with them um so expect them to be pretty useful in the future so this will be literally just very small missiles that fire straight forward um they will get it be getting worked on and um be accessible and usable and purchasable for lots and lots and lots of different mounts in the future um but i don't know exactly when The, uh, yeah. How valuable is lifetime insurance? Uh, not a huge value. Um, insurance for most ships should be relatively uh, non-prohibitive. Uh, but um, 
lifetime insurance is expected to only cover the standard harbour ship, whereas you're going to probably, when you have a ship, especially an expensive ship, um, it's going to be a lot more expensive based on the sort of components that you've given it. So you're like A-class military gear that you've given it. Um, and then you're going to want to insure that on it, which is going to be much more expensive. Um, have I missed anything regarding Perseus news? I don't think so. And I say the, the Perseus expected to be six, from $600. Um, expect to be available tomorrow from the 28th, probably from 4 p.m. Um, some people think that it might be on um, concierge sale tonight, Gemmons Club sale tonight, um, which is, is, is very possible. Uh, it appears to be a Corvette sized craft, um, larger than a Hammerhead but smaller than a Polaris, um, with two large uh, turrets, big, 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 big turrets, one on the top, one on the bottom, and then two smaller turrets at the back. Um, yeah. And beyond that, I don't know. Even with that, I don't know. I mean, it's... I've probably already been asked, but is it likely that we're going to get an indication tomorrow from CIG as to whether the Perseus will be released? Uh, I don't expect it to be straight to flyable. I expect it to be concept sale. Um, Chris Roberts, just making sure I'm not uh, leaking any uh, information. Uh, do you think... Ship insurance will be reasonably affordable in the future. Yes. What are your thoughts on capital-sized alien ships, and do you think they, and which do you think will appear first? Good question. Um, I I don't know. Um. Obviously, we're going to see Vandal capital ships out of the alien races first, um, because they've worked on them. Um, could we see? Uh, I I'd actually expect to see Xi'an next, because I think Xi'an are going to be part of uh, Squadron 42 in, 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 in quite some way. What are your thoughts on... Uh, literally what I just talked about. They might want Idris and have it as a buyback. Oh. Um, you'd have to contact customer service. Because I don't know. Do you think we will be able to upgrade to the Polaris? Uh, Polaris isn't limited hull, is it? So... No, the Polaris is limited hull. But because the Polaris is limited hull... Um, yeah, because the Polaris is limited hull, you probably won't be able to CCU up to it. Um, typically, you can't CCU up to limited um, limited stock ships. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, any word on the roadmap? Yes, they've talked a bit about the roadmap recently. Uh, and basically, they said they're still working on the new roadmaps. They're still planning to get them in our hands by the end of the year. And they showed us off a little bit um, of those new roadmaps. Um, let me see. Oh, I don't have the I don't have the tab open. My bad. Let me show this off. Then we'll quickly. So we've got these. Uh, the idea here is that the roadmap's going to show us a uh, lot more information on what teams are working on what, how many people, uh, more detailed, uh, sort of like length of the sprint, um, the uh, what what it's being used for, Squadron Forty Two and Star Citizen, and whatever, um, better descriptions of it, uh, the, the individual team breakdowns, all that sort of stuff, in a, in a lot more detail. Um, so. They're just much more um, better conveyed information, I suppose. But they gave us a little post saying, yeah, we're doing it. Um, Going to be in your hands at the end of, uh, towards the end of the year. Um, it's, it's scary for us because uh, we're putting ourselves out there, but obviously we're giving as much information as we can and stuff is still going to change. So. Uh, what else have we got? Scanning people in the game will be a big thing. Yes, it will. Um, I was watching loads of stuff on RuneScape and um, uh, people crashing out the servers and stuff and they stake money. It was uh, stake gold, which is effectively money. 
Uh, will the Perseus be will bundle only? No, no, it should be should be um, available for other monies. Uh, for store credit. Uh, do you think people will, will want to get married in game? Yeah, of course they will. Some of course people some people want to role play. Has anyone heard from DS lately? Is he okay? I I don't know. I don't I don't follow up with him. Um, typically. Occasionally he comes into the, 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 the Star Citizen news, and in that case I would say it's newsworthy, um, potentially, even if it's just drama newsworthy, but um, I'm not going to um, actively follow him uh, elsewhere because I don't think that's particularly fair or um, reasonable to do. Uh, any word on what Cloud Imperium is doing to resolve the terrible desync scene in the PU? Um, so there is um, a load of network updates coming in 3.12. Um, they are aware of it, but they need more server tech. They need a load of the, the, the tech that they're currently working on to come online. New studio going to give us 10 systems per quarter. I mean, once they're up to speed and have... In about three years' time, I think that... I honestly think getting a load of star systems per quarter is, is viable. Maybe not 10, a load, like 5. Maybe 6, 2 per month. That would be, that'd be pretty solid. Question view board, on a serious note, do you have any idea why CIG don't make servers their number one priority? Um, so, okay, so they can make it their number one priority for certain teams, but why would artists care about that so they, they need to work on every part of their game um, and it's not mutually exclusive and, and there's going to be lots of things that are also top priority like getting the the game uh, the flight model and combat model perfect things like that um, so also their server and game tech they need all a lot of the features in place which they're still building out now before they finish off and they need iCache and they need server meshing, which they are working on. They are working on them as, maybe not as fast as they can, but almost as fast as they can. Um, is there a date for when the new mode map will be available towards the end of this year? If CIG's delivery is not being pushed back by a publisher, how useful will this new roadmap be if there is no drive to meet the dates? Well, there's drive to meet the dates because they're putting it out there as targets. They're still targeting them there and they want to try and meet those dates as possible. The further the roadmap goes out beyond the um, uh, next quarter, um, so it goes out more and more quarters, it's going to be less accurate, but it's still going to be what they plan to have um, in a patch. And that might change, and they say that. But it gives us an indication of what Cloud Imperium are working on, what they're targeting to do, and at least in the next couple of quarters, what their um, stronger plans are, um, and what they're, and you'll be able to see literally what they're working on. So, it is important, useful information. Is it entirely perfectly accurate? Should you see a roadmap and go, I know what they're going to have in, by the fourth patch in that year? No. You can see what they currently are planned to work on. Can you look at it and see what's probably in the next patch coming in three months? Yes, you should be see with that with a high degree of accuracy, um, but not a perfect one. Uh, is there going to be a medium salvage ship? I would say possibly. Probably at some point. Uh, and you might see modules for other ships to be able to make them into more salvagey ships. Like if they could get um, salvage modules for the Caterpillar, then I would consider that a medium salvage ship. Um. See... Having a hundred star systems, even though we only we don't even have one finished one fully yet, doesn't seem like that much of a stretch to me. When you consider them not actively trying to build all the star systems as quickly as possible currently, like they're trying to build out all the tools, the tool set and paints and and all the assets and stuff, so they can build star systems. And now that they've got a huge amount of that done, they're build, they're getting another studio to then build, um, build those the planets. Uh, uh, and star systems out. While that sounds like they can, then 
get a lot of this out. How many? We don't know. We don't know how um, how quick that's going to be built out. Um. So we managed to, as we talked about that already, hull D or hull C? Probably the hull C. Um, I know the hull D is bigger, but the hull C um, probably is going to be faster. You're probably going to be able to, rather than going, well, I have to buy um, loads of um, small, um, cheap goods. Uh, I can actually buy um, less, more expensive ones to still make a good profit with the, with the hull C. And you, do you see what I mean? When you start moving on to the hull D and hull E, you're looking at volume trades. I do not have a PS5, no. If I didn't already thank you, Taco, thank you very much for the bits. Uh, if cops see you on the ground, uh, if see you throw trash on the ground, will they find you? Uh, potentially, actually. I mean, they might not find you, but you might get an automatic fine. Um, and then someone might run over and clear it up. Um, or they might hit you with stun sticks like in Half-Life 2. That'd be the best. Uh, would you recommend the Smoky Star Runner for current cargo hauling and rock mining gameplay? Um, it's an okay c cargo hauler, but it's obviously not as large scale as, you know, the Caterpillar. Um, it's cool with the rock in as well. Yeah, you could have a couple of rocks in it and cargo. But, um, yeah. Will the hull B be worth the cash? Um, I don't know. So the, the, the hull A and B, it's interesting because there's other ships that sort of go into that area. I have just realised that we are moving into the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo territory. And so we are actually going to jump in game in a second. And I'm going to launch Star Citizen and we will have a look at today. Let's have a look. Origin Jumpworks high performance vehicles service everything from blistering speeds to the peak of culture. Toughness, however, is not a quality commonly associated with the brand. With the 100 series, Origin is looking to change that. Have a look at the Origin 100. Victorious bounty hunter and IAE mainstay, Junior Pardos, who's going to do his best to dirty up Origin's image a little. Ready to take this thing for a world, Junior? Could have oh, wow. put it better myself. I want Chloe. I want my eyes to make a weird sound. One of the other little things uh, with the Origin 600i uh, is that the original Origin 600i trailer, um, that's actually sort of this expo hall. Uh, if you didn't know, it's the. It's the um, Tobin Convention Center, or at least something similar to it. Uh, so what we've got available today. Today we've got um, discounted uh, upgrade pack for the Origin 600i. That's going to be expensive still though. And we've got the uh, Origin 85X. We've got the 100 series. We've got the 300 series. 600i, uh, exploring and touring uh, for um, limited stocks. And we've got uh, 890 jumps, both war bond and um, store credit ones. They've sold out immediately, the store credit ones. So if you are after an 890 jump, there's still going to be another couple of waves for these. Um, one at midnight UTC and one at 8 a.m. UTC. Um, it is 4 p.m. UTC currently here and now. So wave one of the stock uh, store credit ones ha have sold. And we've got an M50. Uh, we've got the G12 Rovers for concepts that are going to be um, driving in the future. We've got the uh, X1 series of floaty bikes. Um, and, oh, one second. Let me just see if there's any interesting Chairman's Club offers. I suspect it is just going to be... Uh, sign out of that account. Sign in with this account. Suspect it is just going to be an origin pack. Uh, yeah, it is. It's the ridiculous expense. Why is that not not as expensive as I thought they were going to be? Uh, a relatively expensive uh, origin pack with a load of origin ships in. So all of the hundred series, the six hundreds, uh, pretty much all the ships we just mentioned. 
I assume you get an 890 jump. Do you not get an, yeah, yeah, you do get an 890 jump, so okay. Um, still ridiculous expensive, available in store credit and, and, and more bond versions. And then we've got the skins. So we've got the, the blue and black Microtech-esque skin and the uh, polar white uh, sort of um, camo skin. Available for the M50s. Um, kind of quite like it in white there. It's kind of quite cool. Any new merch? No, no, just, just the same old merch as well. Let's jump in the game and have a look, see if there's anything else going on. Uh, with the expo today. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Do we think there'll be any surprises with the expo today? Um, no, so the next part of the Alex Dugan um, video, the, the Mercury Star Runner reunion video, and um, that's on the 17th of December. Um, the next part of that. Um, the only surprise I've seen at the Expo so far beyond the Jax McCleary videos with the Hercules C2 um, in is um, Xeno Threat were broadcasting at the very least yesterday at the uh, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Um, so that's the, the um, sort of pirate organization that are anti, um, anti alien. Bear with me one second, I'm just going to buy it. Ah. Ah. Whoa! Okay. The screen didn't fall down. Yes, it did. The screen's falling down. I have my hands. I'm done. Good. Huh? Hello. Ow. Help myself. Hope everyone's doing well. We are going to go travel to the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. What is what is this board playing game? I've been playing at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Every day that I've been streaming. Doesn't st Star Citizen looks good. Ugh. The Perseus is not out yet. No, so the from what we've seen of the Perseus, uh, it looks like it's going to go on concept sale tomorrow. I can't do a... I can do a barrel roll. One second. One second. One second. Is that... 
good enough? Is that, is that, is that good enough for a power roll? Is that what you wanted? Oh my god, I got one frame a second. Why are my frames so bad? Let's hope it cleans itself up. Maybe it was firefighting simulator I was playing earlier. Oh, we don't need frames where we're going. It's fine. If I literally just missed the shuttles I got there, I would have blamed you. Perhaps you are now approaching um. station. Stand clear of disembarking passengers. Oh, I know what might happen. I might have my... It might just be that it was loading. And I haven't restarted my computer in a long time. Or it could be that Voip was on. Voip was on. Voip is no longer on. There we go. Frame rate! Cap. It was trying to access the camera when another camera is already using the camera. And it goes uh, a bit mad. Got the frame rates back. You see? I'm I'm star citizen smur. I know what's going on with star citizen. Does look good, eh? How about they enough mining? Look, mining is gonna get a lot of love in the future when it's actually part of the dynamic economy. Are the bounty hunter missions in game yet? Yes, and they are immediately accessible from the uh, contracts manager. Uh, you can go Bounty Hunter missions. You need to when did you do the Pro Tem ones? Uh, you can then get um, your Bounty Hunter contract in just whatever area you're in. You have to do this like test starter one. So we are at the Tobin Convention Center now, at New Babbage on Microtech, and we're going to take a look at Origin Day at the expo. Will there be a player-driven market? There will be a player-influenced market, but it is a simulated uh, world. So there's a lot of NPCs going on doing stuff. So whereas EVE Online, for example, is entirely player-orientated, uh, this is not entirely player-orientated. Come on. Do I think the 600i is worth it? Not really. Far too expensive. Get it in game. Get it in game. Take me to the origin hall. Yeah, so the Perseus, really looking forward to it. I want to, yeah, I'll be, I'll be grabbing one as a community one. Say, say community one. One I can do content on and then mess around with with people that want to mess around with. What's your favourite thing in 3.11? Uh, the missile changes probably. Com combat's a lot more competitive and actually fun again. Um, but obviously needs a huge amount of work. Um, space station assaults? <laughs> There's not enough of a response. Um... There's a lot of cool stuff in there. What's a good bang for your buck CPU to get for Star Citizen? Uh, 5900X. Might be a little bit um, out of a lot of people's price ranges though. Load of the new AMD range is uh, of the new Ryzen series is pretty good. Hey. Lug, lug, lug. Glug, glug, glug. Nom, nom, nom. Why can't any of Down in one. Back when they found them. It's not my job to pick up after you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, today in the expo, how is this ship fitting there? How is the 890 jump fitting here? It's too big. I thought it was going to be too big. Um... So we've got the uh, 100 series down here. Let's actually have a look at the map to see where everything is today. So we're using three of the um, mini halls in the Zenith Hall today. 
So in the centre we've got the A90 Jump, 125C, 125A. Um, in the top pool we've got the 300 series, um, except for the 300A. Uh, and in the bottom right hall we've got, or the third hall, uh, we've got the 300i, the 85x, and the 600i touring. Probably the roof opens. Well, it's got to, hasn't it? Um, except we are underground in an elevator. Uh, it, it makes no sense. How did they get that ship in here? Uh, and then downstairs, uh, got another 100i and another 100i. No, the 100i and the M50 uh, and the G12s. Okay. Um, so not a massively exciting one. I mean. Okay, for some people, if you've yet to try out the H90 Jump, you can rent it today. Rent an H90 Jump for free. Have a look around it. It's cool. It is massive. Rent. Yeah. I've got... I... Oh, okay, this, yeah, this is my... Sorry. Why have I only got 2,500 rent? Have you seen? That's because this is not my main account. Um... So the 100 series, they're basically starter ships. You've got a cargo variant, a fighter variant. The standard one. Yeah, little cargo variant. Yeah, guy with no head. Not sure if I'm massively excited um, by the 100 series. Maybe there'll be cool shuttles in the future. Uh, let's go have a look downstairs. How does the average A90 jump bonus sound? Hmm, maybe someone should just buy a 600i if they can't afford the A90 jump. <laughs> like that. Um, got that. Just a standard 100 series here. I mean, they're cool starships. They're very much starships. They're cool looking. Did I crash? I might have crashed. I crashed. Bear with me one second. Because hopefully I can just relaunch Star Citizen and start where I just was. But maybe we can't. Maybe I have to run all the way back to the Expo Center. <sighs> and do a weird goose sound. Huh. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if the hell B is worth the cash, uh, personally. Uh, yeah, rip indeed. Rip indeed. -y. Which is bigger, the Reclaim or the 8 Night Jump? The 8 Night Jump. Uh, it, was a, it was a desktop crash rather than a 30k. Your Moby glass won't work, that's rough. Is the origin more like Space BMW or Space Mercedes? Oh, good question. Um, I think they're supposed to be more Space Mercedes. Is the G12 Rover for the 600i? If so, does the cargo just drag on its butt or go inside? I believe the, the 600, the Explorer version has a 600, uh, has a, a G12 in it, yeah? Does it come with one? I can't remember if it does or not. I apologize. Um, it would definitely fit in it. Don't you worry, Drake boy. I'll look after you. Go lobby. Mwah. Has he got like a little barcode on his forehead? It's not. It's not stare. That'd be rude. Got a, a cargo lift. And it's barely the 600 i Yeah, so, no, a, 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 a 30k error is not necessarily the end of the server. So, a 30k error is an umbrella term for any form of server disconnect. Uh, oh, yes. Careful. Yes. 
I am the best. Da, 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 da. Are the doors closing? Or is it actually a 30k? Have we got an actual 30k this time? Did I did I just dance a load? And then the servers crashed. But show you the difference between a 30k the server and a client disconnect. But effectively an umbrella attempt for the same thing. That's a 30k. Right there. So that was probably the server going down. Oh, now I have to. The game needs to know what my Junda is. Oh, it's okay. I'll just start on your babbage again. It'll be fine. You had to pick jetpack, armor, Titan suit, or tank. What would you go for? Oh, uh, probably Titan suit. Although I, I like all of that. Um. Do you reckon it's size 8 or size 9 weapons of the Perseus? To me, it looks like size 9. <laughs> nice game, CIG kick. Are the ships that are sold out every going to be available again? So, the ships that go sold out are available in three waves when they go on sale um, at 4 p.m. UTC when they, the sale starts, at midnight UTC, and at 8 a.m. UTC. Uh, and then they'll be on sale in the future again at some point as well, probably at another Interactive Aerospace Expo next year. Is the Aurora R10 worth it? Did yours overheat a lot? Mine's not overheating a lot, no. Um, did they have overheating issues? Because I've not experienced that. Um, and I monitor my um, heat and voltages pretty religiously. Um, and obviously I use mine as, as a workstation. Uh, so not that I've experienced. Um, I okay. So pre-built are very expensive, and then when you build a high brand pre-built, you pay the premium. If you don't mind paying the premium, or you've got the money, or you want the support that that gives you, great. If you can build yourself, I recommend building yourself. However, that comes with um, occasional hassles. Building yourself, um, but if you really like the the, the brand or whatever, uh, I'm not going to stop you. Uh, I have had great experiences with this A10 that I have been sent, but I've literally been sent it, um, and uh, because of that, it's harder for me to both critique it and recommend it. Um, I've had no problems with it. I think it's a great choice. I do think it's expensive though. Um, is the Perseus going to be limited? Not as far as we're aware. It's going to be, it looks like it's going to concept sell from $600. And it looks like, and this is all rumor, but that's what it looks like. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you. Um, it's all rumor, so bear that in mind. Um, but it doesn't appear to be limited. Keep in mind, Star Citizen loved faster clock speeds and not more threads, but they are building it to be very thread scalable, and their Gen 12 renderer should love lots more threads. Uh, should. <laughs> uh, can I bind my screenshot button in the PU to my mouse button 3? Uh, probably. How long until the MISC Hull series will be worked on? Um, so they've sort of got the Hull C ready for Squadron 42's needs. I uh, expect it once they've got um, I cash in, but they'll probably get the um, very soon after that they'll get the hull C in because they've been working towards that cargo um, uh, 2.0 and um, sort of um, docking for stations. Um, that's also part of that. Uh, hey, guess how oh, only uh, what? This is really weirdly written. So, what? Something about the Perseus. I I'm going to buy a Perseus because I'm mad. Okay, I like Star Citizen. I like all the ships. I want the Perseus. I haven't even seen it properly yet beyond that concept picture that we saw. 
Boop, 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 boop. But, well, Star Citizen runs much better on my 5950X than it did on my 8700K. Yes. Uh, it runs really well on my current 3950X. Um, and when I get my 5000 series um, AMD uh, CPU and my 3080, um, I will be very happy putting my computer all together. I bought the rest of my parts from my computer in the Black Friday sales. Um, so I've got a um, Samsung... Uh, 980 Pro um, NVMe drive. Um, so that, they're incredibly um, quick um, read and write. Um, so I think that will essentially outpace the Optane drive. And I know the Optane drive is more about low latency technically than necessarily write speeds. Um, but um, very, 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 uh, very happy with the way that looks. I've grabbed a load of a 3600 um, RAM that is CAS 14. Um, so really low latency RAM, which seems to do really well uh, with those 5000 series chips. I've got a motherboard case, uh, which I'll start showing off uh, the uh, silent power supply. Um, so I'll start showing the, that off as I build it. Um, that, that PC, I'll probably do a video on it as well. Um, and then I want to, on the... Uh, tempered glass if possible I want to get people's names laser engraved and if not laser engraved then a vinyl on it probably or something uh, so let's look around again so uh, we've got the 100 series around I'm not a massive fan of the 100 series as I said um, but you've got the, they're basically starter ships and they come in slight different flavours of um, the standard one the 100 series but you've also got the 125A which is the combat variant the 135C which is the cargo variant um, uh, we've got the 890 jump 890 jump definitely worth testing I'll probably go have a proper look at it uh, in a bit. Um, maybe have a quick run around the interior, maybe. Although I think we've looked around the 890 jump to death. But it is obviously pretty big. I can't really fit it here. Uh, yes, I'm running at 1440p. But the M50, uh, I want to have a quick look in the um, Hollow Suite. Because we've got the G12s in there. Yeah, so I've got 3600 RAM CL14. Um, got the overclockers, uh, uh, eight pack timed RAM, whatever it was. That was the best RAM I could find and the recommended RAM that uh, timing wise looked really good. Because um, I was going to get 4400 megahertz RAM, but the Infinity Fabric doesn't even make use of that properly yet. So I looked at um, actual test cases. Uh, when will they start working on modularization for ships? Uh, I think they're actually starting to work on that at the moment, uh, sort of. Um, but uh, iCache and physicalized, comp physicalized components coming what appears to be next year. And then moduli uh, modularity will come after that. Um, so we've got the G12 Cool Rover. Um, I'm actually... Uh, I'll be running these instead of the Urza Rovers, probably. Because um, they're a bit smaller, a bit more compact. Um, but also better looking and... Um, uh, probably a bit faster. Um, and we've got the G12A uh, over here as well. Uh, and this one's got the, the missile pods. Pew, 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 pew. Does it come with anything else? I can't remember the G12A. A military variant uh, designed for offensive ground based operations. It's still for long range perimeter patrols, intercept assailants, and exploring dangerous new locales. Um, so expect to see these in potentially theatres of war at some point. Obviously, they are sort of prioritising the Nova Tonk for that. Let's go have a look uh, in the other side halls, and then we'll go look at the website again. Uh, I've got 64 gigs of RAM at the moment. Uh, but I've, I'm only grab. I'm grabbing 32 in my my new one rather than 64. I don't need 64. I just don't need it. I'd rather have the faster RAM for for my for my use case. I'd rather have just 32 gig. Uh, so the most RAM I've seen Star Citizen use that I've actually paid attention to it using is 16 gigs. Um, typically uses between 10 and 12. 
we heard anything about the Tumble Rager. We saw the Tumble Rager model um, in the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. We haven't heard much, uh, I think, more about it. So I do really like the new 300 series. I, I do think they look really, really sleek. I learnt, I learnt to, um, I actually quite like that song. Ooh. Um, I learnt to fly in the 325A and actually was pretty, pretty competitive at Vandal Swarm back in the day. Uh, so you've got the 600i here as well. Um, it's, I say, little known uh, that the Tobin Convention Center, at least parts of it, were built for the uh, 600i um, ad originally. So that's sort of like a, a smaller version of that luxury 890 jump. Um, very cool ship. Um, uh, lots of lots of open space in it. Uh, there's an exploration version um, and the, the touring version. Six hundred I rework. Any news? So, um, no, no real news on that yet. Um, we do know that they want to um, look back at the six hundred I and update it. Right, the interior hasn't been changed yet. Can I go have a look at it. Right, go, go have a quick run round. And uh, we do know that they want to um, go back and revise some of the bits of this ship. Oh. I'm renting it now. Uh, how do I get in? Oh, there's a side elevator, isn't there? I thought. I thought. I thought it was an elevator here. Am I just being dumb? Have I just forgotten where the entrance is? The entrance is there, isn't it? The entrance was here, wasn't it? Is it, is it, just, is it just not there? So this round one. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm a dumb dumb. I thought it was there. I'm a dumb dumb. Someone said round. As soon as they said round, I was ah oh, yeah, it's the round port. It's not an oblong port. Oh, I, I didn't even push a button. Oh no, I'm going to the top of the ship. It goes straight out to the cockpit at the top of the ship. It's pretty big, the 600i. Have a quick, quick look around. Your suit storage. I think it's suit storage rather than escape pods. Maybe it is escape pods. I always get confused between escape pods and suit storage. Not always, but often. And little bathrooms and uh, living rooms. Guest rooms. Some pretty nice looking little rooms, like hotel rooms almost. Um, then you've got. I just love the way this looks here. Um, now, if you want the luxury one, the touring's cool. The exploration one instead has uh, consoles for scanning um, stuff down and exploration and detection, and has a better cargo bay, um, and you can get that uh, vehicles inside it as well. Sort of like belly ramp. Um, got an elevator towards the back of the ship. Got the bar. And then got a lower area as well. Got more of a living area. Eventually you'll be able to play pool or, or snooker. Oh, all the balls are white. Well, that's going to make it confusing. Huh. Kitchen. Got your storage. 
Do we components and stuff? Big boy, big boy components. The ship's like pretty big, eh? And this is just the this is just the six hundred I. This is just the small boy. Same, same on the other side. So I, I mean, I think the ship's fantastic, but it's not one that I'm planning um, to own really, because I already have an eight ninety jump. So why would I need this? Do you know what I mean? Cool little living area. Do any other areas I want to really show off? Uh, oh, that's the actual um, crew beds, crew area. I think that's pretty much it. Lockers, bathroom. See, like, the materials-wise, like slate and stone and expense marble and things. Like, oh, well, that's dumb. Well, it's supposed to be dumb. It's supposed to be expensive and ludicrous. Um, but they are going to give it a bit of a, a once over this ship because they felt like it didn't hit hit the mark. Got the captain's quarters um, for for the making of love directly into space, and the worry that your crewmen you want a curtain here. That's what you want. You want a curtain. Just in case a crewman is just out EVA and to have a look at the captain. A little bathroom there for the captain. Let's get out of here. Actually, can we just fall through the floor? <gasps> no, we can't. Open. Open. Ram makes. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, Ram makes a reasonable difference to Star Citizen. I, I think it's best run with 32 gig, uh, but that's because I do a lot of recording and stuff at the same time, making use of it. Um, So we're, um, yeah, so that's basically what the Expo Halls have got for today. Uh, we haven't been to this one yet, so let's go dash over here. And then we might go a quick once over of the uh, 890 jump, we call it a day. I think that's probably fair. We've got a load of the 300 series here, not the 300i, uh, and we've got the uh, 325a, the 315p. And the 350R. So the 350R racing variant. Uh, it's got fast, big engines. It's very, very, very racy. Very fast. Um, I think some people will probably love that. We've got the 315P. More exploration um, type variant. It does also have a tractor beam on the front, I believe. Yeah, tractor beam there. Um... And then we've got the 325A. It's got like a special uh, missile rig on it that can lock onto lots of targets and things like that. It's the idea, especially with the new missile stuff coming online. I suspect it'll actually be pretty good. Um, have a quick look at the 890 jump. Uh, and then we'll go back into the Xeno Hall from yesterday. We can have a look at the Xeno Hall. Actually, maybe we'll just jump into the Xeno Hall, have a look around all that. Uh, maybe finish off with the 890 jump. Because uh, I want to show you if it's still playing the Xeno Threat stuff. So, yeah, we're expecting the Perseus to go on sale starting properly tomorrow from $600. Uh, there's a possibility they might go to Concierge um, t later tonight, though, so bear that in mind.
Oh yeah, always install Star Citizen on a SSD, preferably a really fast NVMe drive. One of the things that I bought was a new new Gen 4 uh, NVMe drive. Mainly what I want to show you here today, when we have a qu real quick look, um, it's the, the, the audio broadcast um, from Xenothreat again. So we've got the, the Blade. So this is the new style of Vandal ships that the Glaive and Scythe are also going to be updated to. Um, or similar. We've got the old Glaive over there. Banny Defender, the big crab boy. I am a crab! Nom nom! It looks, it looks more sort of base at the moment. I love him. Mwah. We've got the Prowler. First of ship we've got in game. We've got the, the Talon coming next. Um, so we go downstairs. I noticed the Xeno threat stuff when I was in. It might just be playing anywhere. I noticed it when I was in here. Let's just randomly play. So basically, there's the, the Xenothreat broadcasts are Pray for the Stanton. You are. There's a grave injustice. We hate aliens. We're gonna. We're gonna show them. Rah, stand with us, or if you don't, you're against us. But we do have the. And Talon here, um, which is going to be available in 3.12 at the end of this year. And this is the actual Shrike. The, 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 the only difference is, well, the wing colorings, although actually they both look exactly the same um, at the moment, maybe. Uh, but the, the Shrike is basically the missile variant. Um, it's got missile pods. And the normal one is just the light Tavaran uh, fighter. Um, but very, very, very similar. So one is, uh, is the little missile boat. to be the same model in my opinion. One's supposed to have purple wing tips, the, the other one's supposed to have purple wing tips. No, have we not got the Oh I don't think we've got the Xeno threat. Yeah I've got a Shrike. I wanted a sort of like dive missile boat. Um, but the idea is they're sort of like I'm hit and run go in attack quickly, relatively stealthily um, get out and then um, put all their shields to one face as they're going in or retreating. When I, was, when I was down here yesterday, I had... Oh, can you hear that? Did you hear that? Everyone was down to a grave injustice. The, the Xeno threat of broadcasting in here. And you can piece some of the bits together. Uh, but basically there will be Xeno threat missions at some point in game. Uh, and they're, they're going to have a fleet that flies around, it seems, in a similar style to what the UEE had at Fleet Week, but um, obviously more um, aggressive. Um, I was hoping that we'd have it during Fleet Week. It's possible we'll have it 3.12. So, yeah, Port Olisar and some of the other landing zones made those noises last year. Um, but it looks like they're going towards having seen a threatening game. I mean, they are... Technically, a pyro faction that move into the Stanton system. Yeah. Any board? Any word on the job-specific armors lately? Uh, they, we know there's going to be job-specific armors that give you boosts um, in certain areas, like whether that be medical stuff, whether that be um, mining stuff. Um, but uh, we don't know when they're coming out. Some of them are coming out next year. We know that. Attention visitors to the intergalactic aerospace uh. Who designed the Talon? I don't know. Origin Day's alright. I mean, the whole expo for me, there's certainly some call in it. I just wanted a little mission event as well. So, things that I think could 
could be improved. Um, them adding new stuff for people to do. Have have uh, a set of missions. Have uh, a big um, a battle or something people get involved with. Um, have uh, a set of tourism things. Ha so have an item or like like the, they had with the vandal mask or the, the the Halloween masks. Have something that you can do by going to visit a load of places. So you've got to visit all these uh, planets and locations. That will get players going there, having a look there. Um, and uh, getting a free item for doing it. Yeah, this is an item. Um, but I'd, I'd like the, to get sort of like more raid combat going as well. So defending space stations, attacking them, um, attacking a fleet, uh, that sort of stuff. And yeah, really you need to have the, the Idrises and, and the big ships in there as well to make that more viable and more fun. Um, they sort of do have them functional, but obviously there'll be a lot more functional in 3.12, the Idris, because they are adding it there for NPCs to use for defending space stations. And maybe that's when they are planning to have some of these, like, Arlington Gang and, and um, uh, missions and, and things like that as well. And potentially Xeno Threats start to turn up. They, um, that could be, even when Pyro comes into, uh, into play now, we, we don't know for sure. Um, yeah, a, a, an achieve uh, an item for flying 15 different ships for at least 15 minutes, or completing a different set of missions, or... Um, there's a lo load of stuff they could do, um, but actively reward people for playing the game. Um, so, is there any other cool ships I wanted to show you other than the 890 jump? Um, it's a, I, I do love the location, and I love the fact that it's free fly, and there's loads of people playing the game now, and it's okay. It's not perfect, Star Citizen. It is very much alpha, and some people have a hell of a load of problems. However, I'd say that this free flight is pretty successful. Like, the servers haven't constantly been down. They were down for two hours when the event immediately went live, and they, they were slightly patchy um, a couple of times for like an hour or two over the whole thing, but they haven't been constantly down. The 30Ks haven't been constantly thick and fast. Um, it's, as you can see, I'm playing. I've had 130k. That's the first 30k I've had during the Interguide Scary Space Expo. Um, have a quick run around the, the A90 jump. Yeah, I'm. I just wish there was a, a some some event stuff to do to get you to actually play the game rather than just look at the game. Do you know what I mean? The, the expo really cool for looking at. Fleet Week, they had the. Um, the fleet that you could follow, and that was looking at, but you could get involved with that by attacking them. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, the fact that you could take down a Javelin or Idris in that event was cool. I mean, it wasn't intended. That's what makes it even cooler for me. Like, you mess around with that stuff. Um, it's fun. This expo has been a bit empty, I feel. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I mean, I don't think the expo is necessarily empty. There certainly could have been more in the halls as well. Like, okay, so we saw on the Crusader day that they had in a video some of the, the Hercules C2. Now, obviously, it wasn't totally finished, and they would have put it in if they could, probably. Um, but uh, yeah, there, was, there was some bits like that, and some of the other um, expo hall bits that they showed in the Jackson McCleary videos, well, it was like, those halls are great. I know they've designed them to look better for those videos and that sort of stuff. I think we might have crashed again. No, no, we're good, we're good. See if I can remember how to get into the 890 jump. Uh, there is a mini elevator on the side. Are we just getting through the belly? We're not getting through the belly here? Are we getting the, the main... Cargo belly. I have to go to the rear one. Oh, is this the actual cargo belly? I think I was looking at the uh, ship storage for some reason. It's the on the top is the ship. Here he is, isn't it? On the landing pad. And that's the in front of me is the cargo bay and it's the elevator in. See, so yeah, that's that's the thing. You want to be able to. God, the ship's so big. And the elevator's so slow. Look. Yeah, it's taking me a week to get up here. Yeah, the, the, 
the energy jump is a monster. It is a big boy. So we'll have a quick look at that. Is Squadron 42 still a thing? Um, it's getting the lion's share of development. Um, we don't know um, when it's coming out yet. I'm hoping next year. Um, it's uh, We're getting the expanded uh, and up-to-date roadmaps for a lot of this stuff uh, later this year. So we will see a lot of information on the Position Universe and Squadron 42 uh, by the end of the year. So I quite like derping around Star Citizen. I don't mind that it's like a... There's two side little docking ports. Um, I don't mind that it's a sort of like a tourist attraction at the moment. So we've got loads going on in the 890 Jump. We've got guest quarters everywhere. Because it's basically a floating hotel for VIPs. Uh, we've got the spa on this level. Yes, yeah, so we've got the swimming pool and spa area. Um, little, little pool with water wall. Got a big pool here. With sun lounges. Uh, sauna over here. Madness. I expect you feel very good about yourself going here. Actually, this place is probably really good for hygiene. It might even give you buffs in the future. Uh, you've got a little escape raft. You've got way down to engineering. Um, look down the cargo decks later. Uh, is this the... Is the cap... Which was the captain's room? Is this the captain's room? No, the captain's room's over there. Uh, so more guest quarters. And then you've got the restaurant and meeting room. The bar. Restaurant. Meeting room area. Oh my god, it's so white outside that it's blooming. The bloom. The bloom. So that's got access to the kitchen as well. Which on the bottom floor. Then you've got the bridge. Hollow sphere for planning and mapping. Amazing viewing potential. The ship just keeps on going forever. Got the captain's quarters over there. There's just so much going on with the 890 jump. I think the 890 jump's probably a, a best ship for um, Among Us. Huge amount going on with the, the captain's area. Oh, quantum beacon. I, I don't I don't care about your quantum beacon. There's a little bathroom. A little meeting room. All of the alcohol in the world. We go back and have a look at the kitchen. What? What? No, I can't jump over there. Because I'm dumb. The loads of like Viewing areas and chill out areas. Uh, let's go to the central elevators, which we get access to most of the ship from. Um, here? Here. So they are asymmetrical. So we go to the hangar or we can go to the crew kitchen. Let's go to the crew kitchen first. We've been on the, the rest of the decks, but we have not gone to the bottom deck. Yep. Squadron 42 should have been beta by now. They wanted to have it originally beta by this year. Well, I say originally. Um, they had a plan for beta this year, but um, it's not going to be, go to beta this year. So that a little while ago. A walk-in fridge in the kitchen. Proper big kitchen area. There's different foods and stuff going on here. Storage for food. Grow your own. Grow your own herbs. Uh, a temporary guest area and then crew quarters and bathroom. Uh, 
that's where your AVA suit storage is. A rec room. All these staff. And we're moving around towards where the um, uh, ship bay is. So, so li literally the hangar doors are above the ship. Those ships can come up on this cargo elevator which will go up. And this elevator will go up. Hopefully. Go on. You want to go up? Well, the elevator should go up, and then ships can either land on it or leave the uh, leave the ship from it. Oh god! Did want to go up? You don't want to be under that when it comes back down. I tell you that. That's a way for a GG. Elevator down. Oh no, is that is that turret access? Is this turret access? Yeah, that moves to uh, up to turret access. And then we go to the other side of the ship. Again, that's turret access here, but also uh, obviously a basketball hoop. With a little waiting area. The medical bay. It's got all the facilities, and at the medical bay, you can actually um, set it as a as a, a respawn point, um, which is very useful. So the the joy of the night jump is it's got, sort of got all the facilities that you could want, and it's a luxury ship, and it's very pretty. Um, armory area, you know, your, your weapons and stuff here. Like a small army. Oh, and then we're sort of like in the engineering area. Got some elevators up and down. And we saw where these um, these led earlier, where, where the um, escape craft was. So like back to the uh, original elevator. Um, over the original elevator's over here? No? Yeah, the original elevator we came down is over here. Um, and then we've got the battle bridge here. So you remember Star Trek The Next Generation with the battle bridge? This is literally a more secure bridge to run the ship from, should the uh, main one get taken or not become safe. Uh, and then we got the cargo area down there, with the gentleman, uh, and engineering. It's not just cargo, the engineering area as well. We got the spinny thing. Every ship needs a spinny thing, right? <laughs> Or, uh, more specifically, the engine rooms there. We did crash. Oh, look at the website now that we've crashed. Have a bit of a talk about the Perseus again. Um, so, I, I am genuinely looking forward to that Perseus. It's, we're thinking $600 from $600 war bonds, uh, 675 probably for um, the store credit. Um, big conventional turrets. Um, probably run it with a relatively small crew. Bigger than the Hammerhead probably, but smaller than the um, Polaris is what it looks like. Um, and it's got like some of the wing flaps that the Nautilus has. Um, or the flappy bits. This is just drones. Uh, but so, drones um Mines, uh, but uh, all drones, maybe. Who knows, though? Who knows? Board came with the guy likes all the elevators at once and runs away. No, I don't. I don't do that all the time. Sometimes I've done that. Sometimes it's funny to do that. Come on. Uh, is the Endeavour Master Set worth getting? No, God no. Um, I have one though, uh, but it's certainly not worth getting. I mean, it's really expensive. You're about to get the stuff in game for sure. Um, the Endeavour's going to be ages before it's in game as well. It's cool science gameplay. Really looking forward to it, but. It's going to be a while before it's in-game. Uh, you'll be able to get it in-game, and it's expensive. So, Weigh it up. Do you think those sticky-up bits at the back are giant manoeuvring thrusts? Maybe? I don't know what they are. That's the thing, isn't it? I don't know. 
Um, yeah, I, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo uh, could have been a little bit more to it. I think uh, Calimpira have made just over 9 million so far um, throughout the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Um, are they on track to being able to build or match what they've got um, during Fleet Week? Uh, yeah, I think they are. Because um, I suppose we, we're talking about May's total being 15 million. So <coughs> I think they're probably on track to um, potentially beating that. Um, the death of a spaceman coming, do you think community organized PvP events? Um, how will they work in the future? Uh, they'll probably work in an Arena Commander. Um, and electronic access stuff. Uh, also, they might have areas that are more safe for that sort of blood sport. Do you know what I mean? But there'll be the idea is when the death of the spaceman's there, there'll be a lot more, and it's actually active properly. There'll be a lot more to do, so that people won't have to make their own content so much. Um, first, your star price shows that it'll be a very expensive ship in the end. Can we upgrade? I don't know. Uh, I'm a bit confused. As your start price shows, this will be very expensive. It's doing it. It looks like it's starting for six hundred dollars to me ish. Um, don't know for sure though. Um, any other questions that I can answer quick before I dash off? Um. Sometimes I play Star Citizen and it, it hates me for like a few hours and it's frustrating to get the, the, the video stuff that I want. Um, but I, I, do love, I do love my Star Citizen. I love the project though more than the game at the moment because I've identified very much that it's an alpha and it doesn't have all the gameplay I want yet by any stretch. Um, can you customize your 300 uh, origin ship after purchase? Not yet, no. Um, but you will be able to in the future. But automatic customization for all ships will be a thing. The guns on the Perseus are just size 6. Was that confirmed? What a confirmed thing is it? The size of the guns? Uh, I thought they looked closer to, to size 9 on the top. They looked pretty big. They looked bigger than the size 7 that the image had. Did you upgrade your Aurora R10? Yes, so uh, I've got a uh, new RAM in it. Um, that's the only upgrade I've made. Uh, yeah, that's the only upgrade I've made to it. Uh, but the bit we're building, my new PC, is almost all the bits ready, almost. Um, I got the Endeavor Master Pack. Do you recommend melting it and keep it as a buyback? Ah, uh, nah. Uh, I, I, never, I never melt things. Unless there's something I want to buy in its place immediately. Any question? Just a big hug. Oh, I appreciate it. It's lovely. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah. If I buy a subscriber perk... Like the WoW Blaster Pistol, is it giftable to normal subscribers? Yes, it is. If you buy it with real money, you can gift it, just like most other things. <sighs> right, I'm going to dash off. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, we'll be doing uh, another stream at least on Monday, but maybe before. Um, and I'll try and get a video up of the uh, today's IAE um, and some purchasing potentials a little bit later. But thanks very much for watching. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. Um, Minzin are planning to do a lot of Star Citizen gameplay in the very near future. Um, say very near future. Probably about a month. Maybe sooner. Maybe sooner. Um, who else is streaming on the Twitch that we can potentially oh, recommend you go look at?
Uh, we are going to give Maya some love. Slash raid my boy. Um, yeah, so thanks very much for joining me today. Very much appreciated. Um, hope you are enjoying the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. If you're, uh, you can try Star Citizen for free at the moment. Uh, you literally just make a Star Citizen account and then you can load up the game. Bam! Nice and easy. Uh, there's no extra steps uh, like putting in a code or anything anymore. Um, although when you make your account, if you go to, uh, if you put in a, a, a referral code, you do get uh, 5,000 of the in-game UEC for uh, in-game currency for free. Um, you can go to boardgamer.co.uk forward slash enlist or use someone else's code um, to get that sort of inputted for you, whatever. So um, try out Star Citizen. You've got until the 2nd of December to try it out. Um, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. But I did want a little bit more. And it's just sort of like, I feel like it's a little bit of a missed opportunity. But, um, yeah. Appreciate it for joining me today. You take care, guys. Love you.